all this is dr mobeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more show i think today's lecture is a very precious gift it is about lactoferrin and how lactoferrin not only for covid but is general in general very important for viral infections bacterial infections gut health and you can also think of it this way that a mother when she is lactating see the name lactoferrin milk and iron when she is lactating she has one of the most constant proportion of proteins throughout the lactation time is lactoferrin and it helps the baby keep their gut healthy and brand new and kill the bacteria and allow the immune system to be modulated so that newer better friendly bacteria can grow and immune system can actually stay balanced so that is the kind of uh, supplement we are talking about and i think you would love the studies that we'll discuss today as well so let's start so this is drbean.com in the description of this video there is a link which has access to this page so for a 67 dollars one time fee you get access to 900 videos of dr bean and this tells me lactoferrin on amazon is about 34 dollars so two bottles of <laughs> lactoferrin and one time dr bean access so after this here is the article 7 november 2022 lactoferrin for covid-19 prevention treatment and recovery these authors have actually done a review of various studies that are present and how they potentially helped against SARS-CoV-2. So I'm going to actually go over the main points of this study. They have some very interesting diagrams as well. Then there are some more studies that I will look at with you as well. And here is without any um, commercial association. I do not have a Amazon vendor link in the description to say buy from here this is one of the lactoferrin that was used in one of the studies that we will discuss so this study has this particular uh, supplement and because this video could become cme video at some point i am supposed to show more than one or at least three uh, competing brands so here if you see vitamatic lactoferrin there is colostrum powder which i believe has lactoferrin in it airborne gold lactoferrin and you can see others here as well so with this let's start our discussion i think you're going to love this one so these are gifts for humanity and they are continuing this is lactoferrin why do you think it looks like this so there is milk and iron <laughs> in this diagram so let's continue so first of all what is the potential mechanism at the end of this discussion i would also go over generally the details of lactoferrin and what mechanisms in general it has even beyond the covid but i want to start with the covid related discussion so if you wanted to stop after 5 10 minutes you could so here is the mechanisms of lactoferrin potential mechanism mechanisms of lactoferrin for covid number 1 studies has have revealed or demonstrated that lactoferrin can actually bind with sars-cov-2 itself and of course when the lactoferrin will bind with the sars-cov-2 then sars-cov-2 will find it difficult to bind with our cells ace2 receptors so that is an obstruction in viral entry by binding to the virus another mechanism that lactoferrin does is that it can bind with heparin sulfate proteoglycan that is a receptor here and if you see the lactoferrin has its foot on this receptor it is covering that receptor and on this side i have made the heparin sulfate 
proteoglycan by itself. What is the function of this uh, protein in terms of COVID? This receptor attracts or enables SARS-CoV-2s to aggregate on the surface of the cell. So have you seen the rock climbers? You know, those games where indoor rock climbing happens. So on the wall, they have a lot of receptors, if you will, those little handles that rock climbers go and, you know, grab on and climb. Imagine these HSPGs are receptors that help the SARS-CoV-2 aggregate or bind on the cell surface. And guess what lactoferrin does? It occupies them. So when it occupies them, then SARS-CoV-2 or even other viruses find it difficult to stick to the cell. So they have to come near the cell, they have to stick with it, and then they have to enter. Another very interesting thing that why does it bind with the viruses or bacteria? It binds with them because it is a cationic uh, molecule. It's a positive molecule and many bacteria and viruses have negative charges on their surfaces. So it can bind with them. Keep in mind, this is a gift from a mother to her child when she is breastfeeding them. And also the bovine lactoferrin, that is the lactoferrin present in the cow milk, for example, is as efficacious as maternal uh, human mother's milk. So this is the second thing. Third mechanism is that lactoferrin has its own receptor on our cells as well. Of course, if, if our mother sent it to us, we must have cells to respond to it as well. So lactoferrin has receptors on the cells, which are called, of course, lactoferrin receptors. And when lactoferrin binds with them, then inside the cell, what happens is that cell starts producing interferon alpha and beta. And interferon alpha and beta production allows other cells and this cells, this cell to actually become better in blocking the viral replication. This is why you are seeing the SARS-CoV-2 over here. Let me show you his crying face. This is why the SARS-CoV-2 is standing here and crying because lactoferrin has caused interferon alpha and beta to be increased. So this is the potential set of mechanisms that lactoferrin can use. It may actually use more and I will discuss them later on. Now, after knowing that what are the mechanisms, let's look at some of the studies that prove that it can be helpful. And I also want to give you an anecdote. When I talked about lactoferrin on Twitter, somebody responded and said, when I got COVID, I started using lactoferrin. And within one day, his words were, COVID was a, was a breeze for me. I was good the next day. And many of these studies, you would see that when they used lactoferrin, within 24 to 48 hours, patients started feeling better, headache better, headaches went away very fast. So let's start with the studies. Here is the first study. In this study, they had 75 patients and 12 patients, two separate groups. One group was offered, and they were all IgM and IgG positive. IgM and IgG positive means they were positive or they were acutely infected. If somebody was infected in the past, then for next couple of months, three, three four months, IgG will be positive. But IgM being positive means acute infection. So in these two groups, what they did was one of the groups received liposomal bovine lactoferrin syrup that I showed you in the beginning, 32 milligram per 10 milliliter, and they gave that syrup in four to six doses in a day. With that, they offered vitamin C, 12 milligram, four to six times a day. They also gave zinc solution, 10 milligram per 10 milliliter, four to six, I think two to three times. On the other hand, the control group, sort of control group, they were 
12 individuals who were also sick, but they only got lactoferrin and nothing else. Still, the 75, this group, recovered faster. And that was statistically significantly faster recovery. So if you go here to this study, this one, this is that study. And in here, they have a lot of data that how fast the cough went away and how fast the headache went away, how long various uh, you know symptoms stayed. So it's a good study. So this is one study. Then let's go to the next one. This one is in vitro study. So the, of course, the previous one was in vivo. In this study, what they did was they took intestinal epithelial cells. Now, I'll keep adding the little <laughs> fun information about lactoferrin. When we get lactoferrin from our mother or when we get lactoferrin from cow's milk or directly the lactoferrin, Lactoferrin can actually escape destruction in the gastric uh, or in the stomach. Because of that, lactoferrin can actually be found in baby stools. So it can actually move past the stomach without getting destroyed there or without getting you know, destroyed by acids and digested. And then it goes through the whole intestine and still be available even in the stools or be there. So what they did was they took intestinal cells and they had sets of those cells. This is in vitro. One of the set of the cells, they pre-treated them. Imagine prophylaxis. They pre-treated them with lactoferrin. Other set, they did not pre-treat them with lactoferrin. Then they infected these cells with SARS-CoV-2 assay, meaning pseudovirus. And what they found was interesting. The cells that were pre-treated with lactoferrin and then infected, these cells made more interferon alpha, interferon beta, toll-like receptors, MAVS, these are all virus sensing receptors. So within the cell and outside the cells, the sensor receptors that will sense a virus and respond, those receptors increased. So lactoferrin increased the capability of intestinal cells to sense the virus and to respond to it. Why is this interesting? The reason is that many of the authors of these studies, they believe, or researchers, they believe that one of the reasons for SARS-CoV-2 to attack us badly is the attack on our GIT and living in our GIT and growing in our GIT, gastrointestinal tract, our gut. So lactoferrin prevents the SARS-CoV-2 from using our intestinal cells as its little safe harbor because lactoferrin changes the intestinal cell and ups their defensive mechanisms. It installs by creating uh, new sensors. Cells become clever and sharp and they are on alert for the virus. It's a beautiful mechanism. Now, those cells that were intestinal helial cells, but were not treated with lactoferrin, these cells did not have these genes expressed. Beautiful. So here in that study, they said, our in vitro data supports lactoferrin as an immune modulator of the antiviral immune response with moderate effects against SARS-CoV-2 infection. And why do they say immune modulator? You would see that some of these uh, receptors, toll-like receptors, are, for example, on macrophages and dendritic cells. So it's not just the intestinal cell, but the local immune cells. They are activated as well. They are alerted as well. And here is an important thing. Some of the long COVID issues are thought, and we have looked at those studies, are thought to be stemming from the either immune dysregulation of the gut or the virus sitting in there guess what can help, potentially help? Lactoferrin. 
Th this today's talk is a real gift. So here then, next study, saliva analysis. And I have to give credit. This article was sent to me by Dr. Tommy Zaharakis. You know that he once appeared with, with me live. He sent it to me and then from there I am presenting it. So credit goes to him. Saliva analysis. This is the next study. So in this one, and <laughs> some of you would remember this, they had a group of uninfected individuals another group of infected SARS-CoV-2 infected individuals. And when they started taking their saliva, they had been infected at least seven days before. And then a group of recovered individuals who were recovered at least two months or more. What was the point of it? They were observing or measuring various proteins in the saliva of these patients. And so they measured many. I did not write them all. The important thing is, during the acute infection, lactoferrin levels were lower compared to healthy or infected and recovered patients. And this is a very important thing. If lactoferrin levels are reduced, during the infection, then lactoferrin's protective mechanisms will not be engaged as, mu as much because lactoferrin is reduced. And lactoferrin's job is to help against cytokine storm. It is, its job is to help against viruses and bacteria. Its job is to help modulate immune system. Its job is to help our gut be brand new and beautiful. And so, when lactoferrin is reduced during the acute infection, we become open to dysregulated immune system, to a gut that can easily be attacked, and to our tissue cells, which, which would have cytokine storm develop in them. So once again, look, this is a very inexpensive product. And look at the way when I was working on this lecture today, I kept thinking how many ways mothers protect their children when the child is developing in them, then they are sending antibodies and nutrition and protection through placenta. When the child has been born, then the milk has protections and, and we can fortunately get that from the cow's milk and other milk as well. Meaning don't go bothering the folks around you. Okay, so then another study, in vivo study. So in this study, there were three groups of individuals, actually four, but mainly three. These three individuals groups were, one group was 32 people, another group of 28, another group of 32, and they had another group of 32 as a control who were not COVID positive, who were not treated with lactoferrin and who were healthy. Now these three groups, first group had patients from asymptomatic to mild to severe. Some of them were at home, 18, and then 14 of them were hospitalized. Then the second group had people who were SARS-CoV-2 positive, but were isolating at home and nothing else. Third group were individuals, patients who were SARS-CoV-2 positive and were in the hospital. So this first group, you can say a part of it was like the second group and another part was like the third group. And what they did was, this second group, no treatment, just stay at home. If you become severe, come to the hospital. The third group, was in the hospital and was getting normal standard of care. First group was receiving oral plus intranasal bovine lactoferrin. There are actually intranasal drops as well or sprays as well for lactoferrin. So this first group was getting oral and intranasal bovine lactoferrin. And guess what happened? The recovery 
in this first group that was receiving lactoferrin, on average, the recovery was 14.25 days compared to recovery of people at home and recovery meant RNA negative. They may have symptoms negative, but RNA continued on. The second group at home group had became RNA negative on average at th on 32 days. Third group hospitalized became RNA negative on 27.13 days. And this group in which there were patients hospitalized and at home became RNA negative within 14 days. So faster accelerated recovery. And this was statistically significant data. Look at the p-value, 0 0.0001, one chance in 10,000 for a fluke. So here, if you see, this is that abstract from the study. Synthesized, so they're talking about lactoferrin. It is a glycoprotein synthesized by exocrine glands and neutrophils, possesses an in vitro antiviral activity. And this is the study when they did, and let's just read this part. Liposomal bovine lactoferrin treated COVID-19 patients showed fast clinical symptoms recovery compared to the standard of care treated COVID-19 patients in lact lactoferrin treated patients. A significant decrease in serum ferritin, interleukin-6, and D-dimer were observed. Here, interleukin-6 is very important. Remember when the cytokine storms we used to study in the early days of pandemic, the an important interleukin was interleukin-6 that was causing issues. So lactoferrin actually reduces the production of interleukin-6, which reduces the formation of cytokine storm or potential for formation of cytokine storm. Okay, so with those studies, let's just look at some of the things about lactoferrin. It is a very, very large topic, the lactoferrin itself. So I want you to keep it short plus to the point. So here, it is antiviral. And as I showed you, it is a positive charged molecule. It can bind with the negatively charged viruses and bacteria. It is bacteriostatic. That means it disrupts the bacterial divisions or growth. So bacteria just become static. They don't grow any further. It is also bactericidal. It actually kills them as well. It is immune modulator. It allows the immune system to behave correctly when immune system is becoming dysregulated. And I'll explain why. Then, remember its name, lecto, milk, ferrin, ferrous, or iron. It binds with many metals like magnesium and copper and, co uh, copper and zinc, etc. But most highly affine or the highest affinity is for ferric, Fe. And I'll explain why it is interesting. It binds iron. This is a very important thing, even at low pH. Why is this interesting? The tissue that is infected, of course, the war is happening there. Of course, the cells are under stress over there. Of course, the nutritional status and the cells actions aren't working very correctly. So the result is that area becomes acidic. Many of our proteins become denatured in extreme heat or acid. So many enzymes become useless or even disabled in acidic environment. Lactoferrin, remember, it could pass through the stomach's acid valley as well. So it actually fares okay in acidic environments. So in the infected acidic environment, it can stay its shape and bind with iron over there. Now, why is that important? What happens is, and if you see this last part here, I want to connect it to this one. What happens is that when we are under attack by bacteria or viruses, we start making interleukin-6. Interleukin-6 has a function of loading the inside of the cell with iron. 
iron sticks in the cell under the influence of interleukin-6. Now that is thought to be useful for the cell because the cell is making lots of enzymes and stuff. But in fact, that iron gets used up by bacteria or the virus that is present in the cell. So the result is, if there is a virus in the cell, that takes lots of fun with that iron and grows more. What lactoferrin does is, it reduces the levels of IL-6 production. The result of that is that less iron is stuck in the cell and less iron is available for the virus to make more daughters. On the other hand, the immune system cells will need iron as well and lactoferrin stays in that environment binding to the iron and that iron can be used by our cells. Very clever. Our body actually has this mechanism that our body tries to steal iron away from bacteria. So when we get infected, our iron gets locked up in sort of macrophages that live in the bone marrows. Here is another protein, glycoprotein, that helps lactoferrin. So it binds iron even at low pH. So that means when we are infected, any infection, may that be bacterial or fungal or SARS, uh, viral, using lactoferrin during the infection would help us get out of that infection better and manage the infection with better immune system behavior. Then, one more thing that I think you will appreciate. Lactoferrin can bind with plasminogen resulting in less thrombosis. It is actually sort of anticoagulant, but it doesn't break the thrombus. It, it reduces the production of the thrombus. And in SARS-CoV-2, that is actually a very important thing. And generally, if there is a propensity in someone to have thrombi, maybe because of vaccine autoantibodies or SARS-CoV-2 autoantibodies or acute infections, lactoferrin is one useful factor for that as well. Now, this last point is very important. Lactoferrin is known, this is not a postulated mechanism, it is known to cause intestinal cells to proliferate, that means make new cells, and then differentiate, that means become good functional intestinal cells, gut cells. So, of course, mother is trying to give this gift to the baby, so the baby's gut as baby is now getting exposed to bacteria and developing immunity, baby's gut stays brand new under the influence of lactoferrin because new cells are formed, which also means the old cells can be sloughed away and removed. That can happen to us as well. So when lactoferrin is taken by a SARS-CoV-2 patient, the gut cells will be more in number and will be better because they are new. And in addition to that, local immune system modulates correctly. IL-6 is reduced. D Okay, so if you can hear me, I am having this internet issue for some days. 
uh, they said yesterday they came in to, to try to figure out 